Greetings and welcome to the Prams Forum podcast. This is episode 36. It's Wednesday, February 16th, 2022. And welcome back, guys. I am your host, Christopher Anastasio, and super excited to uh, be back with you today. Um, We're going to be very tactical today, and uh, if uh, things go as planned, brief. Um, And and, and what I really want to do today with you guys is kind of dive into some very specific tactics for TikTok um, as you know, I personally become a little bit more obsessed with the platform and figuring out why it's, uh, you know, rewarding people so well from an organic reach perspective, uh, how it's really helping businesses, uh, uh, gain visibility without having to pay for it. Um, although it's of note that ads on TikTok are, are supposedly very cheap these days compared to all the other platforms. Of course, it depends, uh, on what kinds of ads you're running and what your keywords are and things like that you know, that, that you're bidding for and, and whatnot. But it's just, it's a very intriguing platform uh, for me because it sort of fits the whole mantra that I've learned personally through uh, my virtual mentor, Gary V, uh, when he talks about going where the attention is. And the attention is on TikTok. It is growing at, you know, a, a rapid, incredibly logarithmic style pace uh, in terms of number of users and daily active users and things of that nature. Um, and it just cannot be ignored. It is, it is an unbelievably effective way to get the word out and get visibility to your business. Okay, so that's kind of why we're talking about TikTok. I've actually talked about it in at least a few other episodes, uh, you know, a few other things that, uh, that, that we've gone over for you guys here on the podcast. I think the last episode on TikTok, I don't remember the number, but it was back in January, uh, was more so about how to, how to make your first couple posts. Like what, you know, if you're stuck and you don't know what to post, you can start off with uh, a certain, you know, you know, one or two, depending on, you know, what works best for you, uh, one or two uh, posts that kind of fit the, the sort of introductory mold, um, you know, kind of handle, you know, typical frequently asked questions that you have to deal with for your business, things like that. So if you check that episode out, like I said, it's, it's back in January, uh, so it's probably somewhere in the 20s. Um, you know, you can, you can listen to that first if you want. You don't have to to listen to this episode. Okay, so let's dive in, guys. Now, you know, in, in, in researching the TikTok algorithm and really trying to dissect why it's been so effective, why it's been so incredibly rewarding uh, for people who have really dedicated themselves to learning the platform, one of the major components of its algorithm is the watch time that a particular video receives from the audience. Okay, so of course, as they log watch times across all viewers, I'm sure they're aggregating that into some average, um, you know, and and, and who knows what the exact calculation is, but but I'm pretty sure it revolves around something like that. Okay, so so it's got a watch time component to it with obviously a preference for full completion of the video. So, you know, if you release a 30 second video on TikTok, you know, TikTok wants people to watch 30 seconds of it, but it is logging just how much of it they're watching. So if the average watch time is 27 seconds out of 30, you know, that's one thing. If it's two seconds out of 30, that's a bad thing, you know. So, so the watch time, uh, empirically speaking, and the completion of the video uh, are very, very critical components of the algorithm. Okay, so what does that mean to you? That means you need to find ways to create content for TikTok that meets those criteria. So you have to ask yourself, how do I convey the message that I want to convey that A, encourages the most possible watch time, that engages, you know, the viewer, uh, you know, as quickly as possible to grab their attention and hold them there, right? So the first two or three seconds are absolutely crucial, right? So now you've held them and you want to hold them as long as you possibly can. And then, of course, you know, the, the end result of that hopefully being they stay to the very, very last frame, okay? So... What we did was compile some specific tactics that you can use uh, to try to uh, reach that objective or the, you know, those, those sets of, uh, of related objectives, okay? So <clears throat> one of the things that you can make sure that you do in your content is to take whatever the core message is, if there's, let's say, a single one, or if it's a series of messages, you can make sort of the last one the most important. So in essence, what you're trying to do is you're trying to make the big reveal 
come at the end of the video. Now, you have to signal in some way that there is a reveal at the end of the video, okay? But what you're doing is you're moving the punchline to the end. And so if you do your job in the first two or three seconds and you grab somebody's attention and you've alerted them that there's something to stick around for, something that they should want to watch to the end, then you can get them normally, you can get them to the end of the video, okay? So that, that's the first tactic is take your core message or the most important of all the messages you're trying to convey and move it to the end, okay? Now, when you do that, of course, the, the, uh, the resultant uh, action that you need to take is you need to alert uh, the user, the viewer, that there is something to wait around for at the end. So those are sort of, I guess, two tactics uh, that, that sort of couple together uh, that, that you can use there. Let me give you an example in a moment. Let me just kind of walk you guys through each one of these, and then, then we'll kind of uh, do, as, as I do each one, then we'll do an example, okay? So, so let, let's, say, let's say, for example, um, you're a financial advisor, you know that small businesses typically benefit from changing their LLC designation to an S corporation, right? You know that on average it saves, you know, it saves them, you know, ten thousand, fifteen thousand, twenty thousand dollars a year in taxes at the low end, right? So your your TikTok video on that point, if let's say you're trying to teach, you know, that point, you would say, let's say, for example, and I'm not saying these words are perfect or that anybody should actually try to use these exact words. But you would do something like, in the first three seconds, you would say something like, stick around to find out how you can save $10,000 a year in taxes. Okay, now, you know, whether you're saying that, whether you're saying some of that and there's text on the screen, whether it's all text, whatever it is, you, you've got you've to use that combination or that, that approach to get that message out. Okay, that at the end of your, your video, the person viewing it is going to learn a, a method for saving themselves 10, 15, 20, 30 thousand dollars a year in taxes, right? So you've alerted them, and then you know you can use you know the middle part of the video to put in some background, like you know whatever that happens to be, you know explain, you know you know this tactic has been in place since you know whatever year, and the IRS has you know encouraged its usage and blah 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 blah. Whatever your middle content is. Now, is it is it critical that your middle the middle of your video's content is as compelling as the beginning. I mean, if it can be, that's great. If it can be, that's great. But what you, what you really need to focus on is the very, very beginning. You need to really make sure that you've grabbed the attention in the very beginning. And then if, you, you know, if you're just interesting enough to hang on through the middle, presumably you have a lot of people who are waiting for the big payoff at the end. I mean, they've, they've, they've heard you at the beginning of the video and they know there's something to stick around for. So now you've enticed them with this $10,000 a year minimum tax saving method. You've given them some background on it. Maybe you give them some background on you and your financial practice. And then boom, when you get to the end, you say, you know, convert, convert to an S corporation and eliminate self-employment tax on the bulk of your revenue you know, or profit, whatever, you know, however, you, however you describe it, right? So, so that would be an example of using sort of a big payoff item you know, like a big money saving method or money making method, whatever the case may be, and sort of installing it at the end of the video to get people to stick around and watch to the end. Okay? So so that's so that's the first one. Now another way you can do this, as I mentioned before, is if let's say you're trying to get multiple things across, right? And you're sort of in a in a in a mode where you can afford to list them out one by one or you're telling, let's say, a story that has increments to it that you can kind of step through incrementally, you can say, you know, something like, you know, you know, in the beginning, you know, watch this five part or this five step process to learn X, okay, whatever that is, you know, to burn fat, number five is a killer, okay, or number five is the key, right? So you, you would announce in the beginning of the video that you were about to reveal five steps or five actions that the user, the, the viewer could take, right? And so now they're alert. They're like, oh, there's five things I need to look for, right? And then as you list them, you just put the most important one or you put the real punchline in the last place, in the fifth position. And so they wait through items one, two, three, four, all the while they're chewing up watch time. And boom, you hit them with number five in the last five seconds of the video and you've gotten a tremendous percentage of watch time out of them, if not 
100%. Okay, so this isn't a case where you have a list or you have a set of steps that they need to go through. Of course, steps are interesting because steps build on each other. So people would naturally, you know, if, they, if you can get them to buy into listening in the first place, they'll naturally go through all the steps. I mean, you know, if you're interested in a seven-step process, you don't watch the first five and leave. I mean, you, you watch all seven steps, right? So, so steps that kind of build on each other, it's even easier. But if it's a list and the list, you know, each item isn't necessarily related to the other, those items are each a discrete, let's say, piece of advice or tactic or whatever, then you have to kind of alert them that the best one was saved for last. Okay, and then that, that gives, you know, that triggers their brain to say, okay, I've got to watch this entire video. Okay, so that's how you might do that. And like I said, as an example, you know, just using like a, you know, let's say like a weight loss video or something like that, you would say, you know, you, you would hit them right away at the beginning uh, with, you know, a combination of, let's say, text and verbalization or, you know, or one or the other, whichever was most effective for your mode of communication. Um, you know, I think, I think there's a lot of ways you can make that work at the beginning, but it does take some creativity. And you'd say, you know, uh, you know, my five-step process for burning, uh, for burning 10 pounds in a week, you know, number five is the key. And so they know it's five, uh, five items and they know number five is the one to wait for. Okay. Now, another thing you can do here, guys, uh, and, and, and I got to say, I got I to caveat this. I'm not 100% sure that re-watching the video over and over again is going to uh, change anything from an algorithmic perspective. Meaning, if, they've, if somebody's watched the video to completion or someone else watches it 10 times to completion, I don't know that you gain anything from that. Uh, but I will say this, um, if you want to make sure that somebody is absorbing your content and, and kind of, you know, you know, let's say getting the most out of it and also wanting to make sure that you get re, you know, reviews of, of, of the same video and somebody's kind of going through it more than once, then another tactic that you can use is when you create the last frame. You know, when you move item number five, for example, continuing the example from before, when you move that item to the end, you can make it appear very briefly so that the person doesn't have a chance to register it fully. Okay, now, let me be clear. There's a little bit of a double edge to the sword because if you, if you, if you make a habit out of those types of videos, you very well could turn off your audience. You very well could annoy them into, okay, this person is constantly using trickery. You know, they're, they're putting the punchline at the end of the video and they're putting it up for a half a second and I can't read it and I have to watch the video 18 times to read the whole sentence. You know, so there's, there's always a chance you could lose somebody by doing this tactic that I'm talking about. You have to do a little experimentation with it. I certainly think there's some A-B type testing you can do here where, let's say, you release one list where you don't do this and you release another list where you do uh, do this, and you can kind of see which one gets you the more, you know, more uh, uh, results, you know, the better results, right? But but if you make the payoff frame appear very quickly, or, I mean, you could even do it throughout the video. I mean, if you have five steps, you can make make each step appear very quickly, and let's say the person was writing these these items down, they're coming up and going down too fast for them to, to you know, to write it all down the first try. So let's say the first try they get the first two down, and they're like, okay, I got to watch it again to get number three and four. And then they watch it again and get number five. They just watched your video three times to completion to get the five items from you that you listed in your video. Okay, so it's, it's something to keep in mind, guys. I need to do a little bit more research on my own end as to whether that really is going to reward you algorithmically or not. But there, there's, there's, there's definitely solid sentiment out there that the first two items will definitely reward you. The, the more watch time you get and the more videos completed, you know, you know fully watched, uh, the better, okay? So um, I know, that, you know, we could go on forever with, with more and more and more examples here, guys. And, and we certainly are going to keep talking about TikTok here on the podcast. Uh, it's just too important to ignore. It's just absolutely on fire. Uh, you've got to consider it for your business. You've got to find a way to get on there if at all possible. I, I mean, again, I, you know, I've, I've, I've advocated before on this podcast that you have to pick your, your, your sort of fulcrum social media platform and kind of stick with it in terms of mastering that one. And then you build in these sort of satellite ones around it where you can repurpose content. Uh, so that, that still stands true. Uh, I think that's still advisable. 
But I do think that if you can work TikTok into your constellation, or if it so happens that TikTok is your primary platform, even better. But finding a way to work it in and finding a way to get some content up there and do some testing out there, I think you owe it to yourself and you owe it to your business uh, to try that out and to see, you know, see what happens. Okay. So I did want to point that out. One sort of bonus tip that I just want to kind of throw out there for you guys uh, as you hashtag your uh, TikTok posts, uh, make sure that you are hashtagging, you know, obviously the relevant terms for whatever industry or niche or service area you're in. Uh, that's obvious, but you also want to add the hashtags for what's called the For You, F-O-R-Y-O-U, the For You page that is essentially the main feed that most TikTok users spend time on, or at least they start, you know, when they come into their app, they're looking at the For You page. And then you can kind of switch around to some other views and other ways to kind of bring up content. But that For You page is where you're just getting that onslaught of one video after another. You're just swiping up and swiping up and swiping up, and you're just getting one after another after another out of that, right? So to make sure that you are, you're on a trajectory to get on that page with your audience uh, and, with, and with a new audience, you want to hashtag the For You page, right? So you want to do hashtag FYP, hashtag F-O-R-Y-O-U, and hashtag F-O-R-Y-O-U-P-A-G-E. Okay, so those three hashtags you want to throw in there and it just kind of gets you in the game for being on the For You page, where new people can discover your content, uh, given that they have an interest in, in the area that you're, you know, that you're, that you're posting content under, uh, you get a chance to get in front of new eyeballs, okay? So, and then, you know, once you're getting in front of them, let's say with a good, strong hashtagging re- uh, regime, then you're using some of these tactics that I, that I talked about today to grab them immediately in those first three seconds and then keep them as long as possible, and hopefully all the way to the end, okay? So hopefully this was helpful for you guys. Um, You know, this is almost a real-time discovery, to be quite frank with you guys. Obviously, Transform does not have a TikTok page, so, you know, maybe we should uh, take our own medicine here a little bit. Um, I mean, we probably should, Uh, but, you know, so that's, that's, uh, uh, you know, that's definitely out for advisement, Um, but what I would say is, It is something that we're doing a lot of research and study and focusing on from the standpoint of helping our clients and making sure that they are are, are, are kind of built for TikTok or if they're using it as, let's say, an ancillary platform, that they're using it as effectively as possible. And so as we go along and as as we learn this platform better and better, um, it becomes important to share what we're finding and what we're experiencing immediately with you guys. So, um, you know, I know in, in terms of the team, you know, some of us have our own TikTok account, and we've been, you know, kind of using it to, uh, you know, sort of garner which trends and which approaches work work best. And so we can, you know, obviously convey those to you here uh, as they become relevant. So, so it was important for me to get this out to you guys today. It's something that I've been noticing recently. I was reading about it, uh, uh, you know, earlier today, uh, just, you know, kind of, you know, devising different ways to sort of slice, uh, slice this up. And, 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 and for you guys to get your content out there in a way that, that, that grabs attention and keeps that attention, okay? So if you guys have any questions about this, if you, if you, if you do want us to work with you closely on this and help you devise a strategy for it, uh, we would love to do that. Just reach out to us uh, you know, on our website. You can come over to Facebook uh, for Transform, uh, come over to our LinkedIn page for Transform, and uh, reach out and contact us uh, one of those ways. Of course, we appreciate you liking, subscribing, and sharing the podcast. Uh, you know, can't thank you enough for that. Um, you know, just you know, excited to bring you guys some more episodes and more value here over the coming weeks. We will be back again at the end of this week with episode 37. Uh, won't reveal that topic yet, but we will get you another episode before the weekend comes. Okay, guys. So, so think about it. Look at how you can do TikTok. Look at how TikTok can, uh, you know, can help your business. Yes, there's a lot of young people on TikTok, and young people have money too, and young people start businesses and. There's no reason that that should be the reason you're not there. Uh, I think there's other reasons you may decide it's not the place to focus, and that's fine. Uh, but it's definitely something that I think if you just dismiss it out of hand, that's, that's the fatal error. Uh, but I would, I would definitely give it some thought and give it a look, and we can help you do that if you'd like. So, uh, again, it's Chris Anastasio signing off uh, Wednesday, February 16th. Uh, we'll see you guys again, uh, talk to you guys again at the end of the week. And I hope you guys have a great night, and thank you again for listening. Bye-bye.